Welcome to Flourish Online. We are so excited that you are joining us tonight. I am Allison Dameron, the Women's Director here at GCF Church, and we are going to be discussing all the things 2020. I have Michelle Dameron and Tempest Anderson joining us. So Michelle is my sister-in-law, but she's also married to the lead pastor here at GCF, and she is a mom and a licensed counselor and in ministry. Tempest is married to a man in ministry. She is a mom and also a licensed counselor. So these women are powerhouses and have lots to share with us on all the things 2020. So if this year has brought more questions than answers for you, this night's for you. So ladies, how has 2020 been for you in your individual homes? Ooh. You wanna go first? <laughs> you can go. Um, 2020 for me, um, individual home, I would say it's been a transition, really. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my family moved here from Green, well, to Greenville from Virginia um, back in November. My husband took a job here and then so did I, followed suit soon after because <laughs> um, he couldn't move without us, you know, stuck like glue. And um, yeah, it's been just a transition. I, I felt like when 2020 hit, we were starting to get our stride and starting to connect with different people, connect to church. And we were, you know, put in quarantine because of the pandemic. And so it's just been interesting here, here and there. Um, but I would say transition would sum it up for me. Yeah, <clears throat> um, it's been a, you know, a real interesting year. Um, to say the least. So um, I think, you know, in the, in the spring, I found myself, like many parents, um, schooling my children, or at least attempting to help school, um, and trying to finish up my graduate degree at the same time. And so just very all over the place and, and went into pure survival mode, I guess yeah, would be the yeah. best way to describe mm -hmm. it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I've had like really chaotic dreams. I don't know if you guys have been having like really weird dreams at all, um, wow. but that happens to me like periodically through this whole um, process. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're starting to gain some footing mm -hmm. a little bit because this is now like our new normal, I guess, yeah. unfortunately. So um, yeah, it, it feels not quite as unstable as it did in the spring, but still trying to figure things out. I guess. Yeah. For sure. Have either of you discovered anything new about yourself in this season? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think it was something that I knew was there. I think a lot of people are probably experiencing this where you feel like maybe God is just stripping you down to like the bare bones um, and, you know, shutting out all distractions and really being able to get to the root of issues that may have popped up in different ways. And so for me, it's been that piece of trust and control, like having control, mm -hmm. feeling very out of control in different ways. Um, I'm the type of person where I like to have things together um, and organize and plan, not to a T, but at least to have some sort of structure in place. Mm -hmm. And it's this year and just things that we've encountered really have caused me to trust in the Lord even more um, and really live into the scriptures of not leaning on to my own understanding, but in all, literally in all of my ways, um, letting him direct me, letting him be my guide, um, because it's been challenging to, to see how much was out of my control. And it was very frustrating. I felt like I've experienced emotions that I hadn't quite experienced in a long time towards God and mm -hmm. like anger like came up in frustration. And I was like, oh, for the first time in like, I don't even know how many years I feel angry with mm -hmm. you guy, I'm frustrated. Um, and it was because I wasn't really allowing myself to fully trust him and to fully relinquish control in all different aspects of my life, so. Yeah, I I've I'm learning. I would say I'm learning. I'm not. I have not learned like Paul said. I'm <laughs> learning. Right. Yeah. Um, to be content in all circumstances and really um, seek Him and with all of the anxiety that may be coming up and all the fears that may be coming up. Yeah, I'd second that with just the trust and the control. Like, I think that's probably a pretty universal. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Thing you know going on. Um, 
that's definitely been a big piece for me in, in working through that with the Lord um, and, and realizing how much I feel out of control sometimes. Um, and then bringing myself back to that place, okay, well, I don't have to be in control because mm -hmm. God is in control. Um, so yeah, I, I know one of the other things that I've been feeling a lot this, you know, over the summer too was um, I would feel a little bit of anger, like mm -hmm. maybe towards God or sometimes, you know, like you may lash out at your family or, you know, those closest to you. Um, and so, but even underneath that anger, I think is grief mm -hmm. and loss. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I think I've felt that too, because, um, you know, graduating from my program and not being able to have the graduation. And then you think about, you know, high schoolers not being able to do theirs. And it's just been a, a very big season of loss, I think, mm -hmm. for many people like across yeah. the spectrum. And so I've been kind of working my way through that, that, you know, like things don't look how I thought they were going to look um, in this season. Right. And that's not always all bad, mm -hmm. but, you know, sometimes we have to also acknowledge where we are. Yeah. And yeah. that's not, it doesn't feel good. That's good. Yeah, I've definitely felt all the things both of y'all just shared. So, all right. So we got a lot of questions pertaining to mental health. So I'm just going to jump right into that. Um, the first question is, what advice can you share with us that will help us as Christian women keep from feeling overwhelmed with the added stress and things of this year? And so I think as, of, as things, it's kind of like, remembering your mask when you leave the house. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the first part, I guess we could say is what things could you share with us to keep from feeling that overwhelming feeling? Because it does seem like there's always something, you know, and I've joked, I'm sure you guys have joked, like what's this month going to bring mm -hmm. um, that we have to navigate or face as individuals, but also as a family? Yeah, when I think through that, taking it one day at a time, um, or one thing at a time. Um, I know you like Emily P. Freeman as well as I do. She wrote a book called The Next Right Thing. And I think that's an appropriate saying, you know, yeah. for right now is what's your next right thing? You know, is it ordering groceries online? Is it, you know, what, whatever that thing is doing that instead of thinking, what am I doing next week? What am I doing next month? Because mm -hmm. sometimes that's overwhelming and we don't know like what that answer is. Um, so that's one thing I would say. Yeah, I thought the next right thing was from Anna in Frozen oh. 2. Yeah. Is that from, from it, that They book? came out, they actually came out about the same time. So that's I'm, I'm going to say that Anna stole that. Um, yeah, I think Freeman. she probably I'm did. Sure. I don't know about anybody else, but that's been on repeat in my house along with several other Disney Plus um, <laughs> situations <laughs> and movies and shows. Um, but yeah, I would echo that along with um, some of these things I don't think we can avoid, you know, and it goes back into what we were talking about in that having control and having the lack of control in, in a lot of things. And so something that I like to do with the people that I work with um, is an exercise that focuses on that. So what you want to do is create one circle, you know, a bigger circle, um, and then create another circle inside of that. And so in that bigger circle, you want to write all the things that are outside of your control, you know, right? Like time and, you know, certain other things that may come up for you. And then inside um, in that smaller circle, circle, you're going to want to write down things that are in your control and you letting that be your focus, mm -hmm. you know, what is inside of my control. And so, you know, like the forgetting of the mass thing, like maybe it's like, oh, okay, I keep forgetting my mask. Like maybe I'll go on Etsy or something like that, or maybe make this a project where I can create like a fun little mask keychain holder or whatever. Um, and you can start, you know, finding solutions to some of the things where you feel just completely out of control. And the reality is, is that we're all human. And, mm -hmm. and so some things will be missed. And at times, you know, certain days or certain hours of the day, you just may feel overwhelmed. But um, I think it's important to try to see how you can break it down in bite-sized pieces. Like, what can I take in in this moment of time? And, and sometimes you have to break it down, not just from hour to hour, but um, minute by minute, second by second. Mm -hmm. And letting yourself have that, living into that grace that God has given you um, and relinquishing the things, you know, not just that are in your control, but outside of your control for sure, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think that's good. I'm glad you mentioned grace because that's what I was going to say. I think just even just having grace with yourself mm -hmm. in this season, in this year, each day. Yeah. yeah, I think we like beat ourselves up so much, like in wanting to get it right. And I'm, I'm, you know, preaching to myself. This is all of, like I said, what I'm learning um, and giving myself that space and allowance to be human, to not mm -hmm. be a robot. You mm -hmm. know, um, a lot of the things that we're we're being faced with now, Michelle mentioned, you know, people having to you know, teach their their kids, you know, and figuring that out and feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm not equipped to do this. I haven't gone to school for this. I haven't looked at some of these things since I was in school. How do I navigate these um, different complexities and challenges and hurdles? Um, but, you know, I, I was talking to somebody today and I was like, obstacles look different. You know, it may look mm -hmm. like a stumbling stone for one thing, but then you might have to full on sprint and <laughs> do like one of the tracks hurdles and <laughs> and another thing and so I think you know just giving ourselves that grace and allowance being gentle mm -hmm. with ourselves is another um, way of saying giving ourselves grace yeah yeah I think perspective is important mm -hmm. too um, I know for me like I dropped the kids off at full-time school yesterday and um, I cried like a baby oh. when I got out of the car like it was the first day of kindergarten or something <laughs> but like it's just all that like oh my god like they've been at home for like yeah. months and now I'm releasing them into this unknown and I have full confidence in our school and the teachers and stuff but it's still you know uncomfortable a mm -hmm. little bit and um, anyway um, but later that day um, I felt like the Lord kind of brought some perspective in that you know I like historical fiction and reading and I love the World War II time period and so I started thinking about concentration camps and, you know, bombings in London and stuff. And it's like, man, like I get to see my kids at the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I get to go pick them up from school and check on them and, see, you know, see how their day was. They're not, you know, we're not worried about air raids or, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, even though this is an unseen silent thing that we're dealing with and it is scary and stuff. Um, it's just a different kind of thing. But that perspective helped me realize like, okay, like, I'm okay, my kids are okay, mm -hmm. like, we're going to make it through this, you know, like, and so anyway, so that kind of helps me and and just re-anchoring ourselves in hope, you know, yeah. that yeah. Um, our hope is in Christ, and that perspective helps me kind of in those moments where I am feeling overwhelmed or out of control, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even speaking from, you know, that mental health perspective, I can imagine, you know, you dropping them off and being emotional about that, but also to maybe having some time for yourself within mm -hmm. that and like knowing that you need, yeah. you know, certain mm -hmm. things. Um, I remember me and my husband, we were invited to like a small brunch the other weekend. And I know, you know, put it in the comments, if you will, whatever. I know everybody have different perspectives on gathering right now, but we felt comfortable. And um, it was going to be our first time leaving our daughter with someone in this area, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. away from us. And so I had a little bit of angst about that, but at the same time, I knew that this is something that we need. We need a little right. bit of adult time, you know, where we're not sitting in these like little tiny baby chairs playing with Play-Doh mm -hmm. or, you know, doing, you know, feeling like someone else needs us, but we could enjoy, you know, adult conversation. And we had an amazing time and it was just a couple of hours. And so I say, live into the things that you need too. Like I've discovered I really enjoy I do I've already knew that I enjoy working out in the mornings but something new is that I've been walking around our neighborhood and so I'll use that time to listen to a sermon or a podcast or you know music or you know Marco Polo I don't know if anybody's familiar with like those um, apps or something or sending a friend a message um, I'll utilize that time too and it, it just feels amazing yeah that's good Okay, next question is, how do we reconnect with people on a personal level after being socially distant? So what advice can you share with those, maybe even that have social anxiety, it's a, which I'm thinking probably was heightened even just being socially distant, so. Yeah, I think that is a tricky one. Like if someone was already, you know, struggling with issues with social anxiety, 
Um, I definitely believe that it could be heightened. Uh, I have been thinking a lot during this whole pandemic time about people who live alone, you know, single, who may not have family. Um, and of course, in my professional work, have had to just work through. Sometimes I am that point of contact uh, with people. And so that's, you know, a shameless plug for counseling to say, if, mm -hmm. if you are experiencing these things at a high end level, I would definitely recommend maybe seeking a counselor um, just so you can have like somebody to touch base with and explore that, you know, definitely on a professional level. But as well, I think it's a, a, a great time to be creative, you know, with the friends that you do have. Um, as I said in the beginning, we transitioned from a whole state um, that we've been living in, the area that we were living in. We were there for over a decade. And so we have very close friendships where um, our friends are family. And so we um, feel more like connected and close to them since the pandemic because our lives aren't as rushed. Um, that's one of the, the blessings and benefits that we've been picking up and seeing. And we're able to do things like FaceTime. We, you know, downloaded House Party. And so we've done that before and mm -hmm. played games. And um, some of our friends have put on like Zoom couples nights and parties. And I remember one that we were invited to I was actually in the bed and I forgot about it and <laughs> oh. was about to go to sleep. And they were like, are you all coming? And it was like nine o'clock. I know, um, I, that's- You work, I, Girl, I you got a job, you got a kid. <laughs> nine o'clock's late. It's late. And so I, I came down, you know, and I had an amazing time. And so I think sometimes you just have to challenge yourself and push yourself out of your own comfort mm -hmm. yeah, zones good. too, to be able to make those points of contact that are, you know they're gonna be beneficial in the long run. And so I say get creative, you know, download the apps, you know, reach out to people you may not have talked to and for me, like this could definitely go into a whole different conversation. I, you know, took time off of social media. I'm still not on there um, right now, except TikTok. And, <laughs> and, and so I've taken time to, if someone comes to mind, um, I don't think that's just happenstance. I think that's the Holy Spirit like nudging me to say, contact this person, check in on them. And I've had some great conversations just from doing that where I may have just been like seeing their lives via social media and it may look one way, but behind the scenes, something else is going on. And so I think it's a great opportunity to dig deeper into those relationships. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like what you said about get creative. Um, I think that's definitely important in this season. Um, I know um, if you're maybe immune compromised or been at home or whatnot, um, yeah, you can feel that heightened anxiety as you think about going back out in public. But I know, you know, some people have um, maybe met with somebody else like in the car, like one person's in one car and one person's another, and you can have lunch that way mm -hmm. with the windows down or you know, whatever. So that's like an example of, of further creativity. But um, I think you just too like need to know like your boundaries a little yeah. bit like um, and start maybe, I don't want to say push it too far or anything, not anything like that. But, um, you know, if there's an outdoor get together or something like that, like going with a mask on and knowing like I don't have to stand really close to people, mm -hmm. like I can stand further away um, if you don't want to go to like an inside gathering or something like that. So I think just like exploring and creative, being creative in those ways to, um, but yeah, because I think the tendency is for us, um, and I'm a little bit of an introvert too, so it's like you can, I think in this pandemic, keep pulling back even further and yeah. further mm -hmm. until you realize that you're like completely isolated yeah. um, and then depression and those kinds of things begin to creep in. And so we want to steer clear of those things. And so, um, yeah, stepping yeah. out a little yeah. bit in ways that we feel safe mm -hmm. um, and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So those of us that don't struggle with social anxiety, how can we be maybe more sensitive um, to people who do, mm -hmm. especially in this season? That's a really good question. Yeah. Sorry, that's on the fly. 
No, I like that. No, I like that. I think that's a really great question. Yeah, I found people who, you know, struggle with social anxiety, it's not necessarily that they don't want to speak to people. You know, it's it's a lot of fears that come from what will this person think, mm -hmm. you know, about me? You know, is it something wrong? You know, maybe some heightened sense of paranoia there at different points. Um, or I don't know what to say. Like, I'm not a person, I've heard this before, I'm not a person who can just do like the weather talk, like the small talk. Um, and they're, they're like, I just wanna go straight into a mm -hmm. conversation. And that can come from, you know, being in, more introverted, um, or maybe you're like me more on the ambivert side where I can play on both. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to, like I said before, reach out to those people. Um, because it may not necessarily mean that they don't want to reach out, but that they, you know, are a little bit nervous to yeah. do so or a lot of bit nervous. And so I think it's important for those who are not as extroverted to reach out, but also know to tone it down. I know I can be team too much, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at, at, at points of time. And so being able to recognize, like, you may have to approach it from a different a different way. You know, you, you may not want to be like, all right, we're going to jump on this party together and do but maybe it starts off with a small conversation um, and going from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think communication is just key. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know somebody's not real comfortable, hey, you know, what would make you feel more comfortable yeah. about hanging out together? And then doing that, you know. Yeah. That's good. One of the things I thought of too, like the first part of your question of how do we reacclimate ourselves, I think that's mm -hmm. what it was. And so um, an idea that, ca that came to mind is something that me and my husband will do. We'll do like weekly check-ins, sometimes bi-weekly. And it started off with a series of questions that we came up with, um, but then we heard from a different couple to do it with the four W's. And so have you all heard of that before? It's um, wows, wounds, worries, and wishes. So you kind of start on like a high note and end on a high note and oh, you kind of sandwich the wounds and the worries and the in-between. But I found this can work not only for couples, you know, in a, in a romantic way, but also like with family. Um, I think, you know, in our conversation that we had offline, you know, getting back into like even larger families, like your extended family, you're, everyone wants to say something, everyone has updates and things like that. That. And so I think it could be great to like, hey, be that person, be that person who has like family moderator. All right, yeah, <laughs> let's, you know, do some wow, some, you know, maybe you don't want to get that deep the first time, but. <laughs> With the Maybe wounds. yeah, with the wounds. <laughs> yeah, let's right? talk about your wounds. Let's real talk quick. about the wounds. <laughs> it was like, well, such and such, you know, Harry. I, I don't know if anybody's watching the name Harry or got a family member, but that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> um, but you might not want to get you know too deep into that. Or some people just do highs and lows. Mm -hmm. So what's been a high and what's been a low? Mm -hmm. um, and don't be afraid to be that that friend or that family member to say, let's get some structure a little bit in the mm -hmm. conversation to really catch up with one another and not keep it surface. That's good. Okay, so our next question, um, we're all processing and dealing with the news, the new normal, and our thoughts on all of these things. And it, does, it takes a toll on each of us. So what can you share with us that can help us process what we're feeling? So that's the first part. The second part is, and then how can we help those around us process? Because like for me, I noticed that my kids are, you know, they're processing mm -hmm. and they don't always have the words to tell me what they're feeling, but they have actions. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, whoa, why are we acting that way? Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I think, well, right off the bat, just to answer that question, or since we're talking about kids, um, I think with kids is um, play, mm -hmm. like playing with them and noticing maybe like themes and what they're playing. Um, and that kind of helps as they play and we play with them, that helps them process mm -hmm. their world and the chaos and all of that kind of things. Mm -hmm. Like um, even at the beginning of all this, I remember a few weeks in playing dolls with Brielle and um, we were, she was pretending that there was a tornado outside mm -hmm. and the dolls could not go outside, you know? And so that was just like an immediate, like, okay, this is how mm -hmm. she's processing mm -hmm. the coronavirus. It's a storm and we all have to stay inside. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can have like a window into your children's lives 
just by doing that or throwing the ball outside mm -hmm. and playing sports and then they'll just start talking and stuff. Their children are not just going to sit down and like start mm -hmm. like yeah. this is what happened at school today, mom. You know, yeah. sometimes <laughs> I wish they would, but they don't, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, it's for kids, that's what I would say. Yeah, um, and I have a four-year-old. I know um, Allison mentioned at the beginning that um, I'm a mom. And so a peek into her world is really cool and interesting. And she's a talker, gets it honestly. Um, <laughs> and I, I would agree, play is really, really helpful. Um, I've learned a lot of different things from playing Barbie. She's all about Barbies right now um, and different things. Or she'll say coronavirus, but in the sound of Cardi B. And if you are watching this and you don't know who Car Cardi B is, don't don't feel the need to look up. Don't don't feel the need. <laughs> don't feel the need to look her up. You know, if you want to just stay in that just safe, sanctified category, I am for it. I <laughs> I implore you to do so. But um, being a counselor and a human being, you learn a lot of things. Anyway, um, <laughs> so she she'll say like coronavirus in that way, and I think it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but at the very beginning, we really had to teach her what it was mm -hmm. and what was happening and how do you describe something that you can't see mm -hmm. um, and go from there, which, you know, you can definitely start preaching the gospel in that way. And so we found like, just as we do family, like couple check-ins, we will, um, we started doing family devos mm -hmm. at the very beginning. So she knows mm -hmm. and she looks forward to it and she knows the questions and she'll say, well, I saw this in it and you know, um, what, what did you all see? And so she likes to moderate and like do it. And we, um, you know, got a, a new dining room table. And so we started doing family dinners around there, turning off the TV and, and things. And you'll get to hear a lot of what's going on in that way too. Mm -hmm. um, so the first part of the question was, what can you share with us? Maybe some practicals um, that can help us process all the things that are coming at us. Um, I guess process our thoughts and process our emotions, mm -hmm. um, but I guess individually. One thing I think is um, being maybe self-aware and knowing like your triggers. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that helps me personally um, is not inundating myself with like a ton of news. Mm -hmm. um, so like I want to stay abreast, I want to know, but I found myself as I was checking things, um, if I checked it too much, like during the day, I felt myself coming unraveled mm -hmm. and I, I just, I can't do it. And so it's, um, you know, I, I think about that, that scripture about sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit. And um, I have to sow more to the spirit intentionally in this season mm -hmm. than to my flesh. It's really easy to yeah. sow to your flesh in this season and it's like the most compelling. Um, and so it takes... I feel like self-control and discipline in order to sow to the spirit um, and help with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I agree. I think you have to be intentional with that, you know, with your sewing. And so if it means implementing some new things and being flexible with how your routine used to be and how it is right now and then finding those pockets of time where you can seek the Lord um, in whatever way that's going to look like during this season. And so it may you may not have, you know, an hour. I don't know who had that before, but you know, maybe you have this pocket of time and then you have another pocket mm -hmm. of time where you're in the shower or something like that to be able to do it. But the first thing that came to mind in terms of processing, and I'm a huge fan of, is journaling. Mm -hmm. And so whether you like writing or not, you know, um, I like to personally use journaling as prayer. Um, and so being able to say, you know, God, I'm feeling this, or, you know, this is what's coming up for me, um, which is a counselor question that I use a lot. What's coming up for you today? You know, what's sitting with you? Um, what are you sitting with? And so um, I take that, but just, you know, use it with my, my sessions with the Lord um, and being intentional in that way. So processing, um, another helpful tool tool that can be used is something called the coping kit mm -hmm. and um, I'm all for that 
basically it's something that you would create. It could be um, a physical box or I had somebody say that they wanted to create a virtual one and you would just put things in there, whether it's like an adult coloring book or your journal or a card, um, index card that says go journal, um, a playlist that you've created. Maybe it's a playlist of funny videos that you have or a, a, a music playlist that you want to go to that helps you kind of regulate and get yourself in a, a space that feels good. Okay. Um, I want to ask this question before we run out of time. So what long, what are the long-term implications of the world or nation um, of going through this trauma together? And how can we as the church respond? Or maybe even how do we need to reposition ourselves as the church to better respond? So that's the like big waffle last question. <laughs> yeah, what comes to mind is that we haven't been here before, but we have been here before, right? Mm -hmm. And good. so we think of the example of 9-11 mm -hmm. that shifted our world, um, especially America completely from the way people fly, um, for sure, yeah. you know, where we didn't have certain um, precautions or security measures in place, and mm -hmm. now they are. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and I think that's just gonna be how the world will be. Well, will I think that we're gonna be in mass for the rest of our days? I don't think so, you know? I am hopeful that God has placed it on the heart and mind, come on somebody, pray with me, <laughs> of an individual or a group of individuals who are gonna come up with, you know, some form of way that we won't have to do that, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and being able to, a vaccine, that's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so we're, you know, we're gonna live into that, pray into that, and but I do think that there will be certain things that people will be more intentional about and aware of, have a heightened sense of awareness. And what do we do when, you know, those things have happened before um, in our lives on a smaller scale? We adjust, you know, um, we live into the grace of that season and, and press into that as a church. You know, we are called to pray. We are, you know, called to pray for our leaders and pray for our families, pray for our friends. And so I would say, if you're not praying, if you're not fasting, come on y'all, we gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. those things that we specifically as children of God are called to do mm -hmm. um, and, and be okay with, with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, this is not a time to coast as a Christian. I mean, we have to go deeper mm -hmm. and we have to really seek the Lord and, and be with Him. Um, I think globally, like, we're experiencing a trauma together. And so I think there's obviously a rise in depression, anxiety, yeah. um, substance abuse, um, domestic violence, domestic violence yeah. definitely. Um, and so, you know, and, and probably, you know, child abuse and things of that nature. And so I think we need to be cognizant of that and aware of that as a church um, to check on our people mm -hmm. and to, you know, people that are close to you um, that you know might be prone to those things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, how do we serve as a community? How do we reach out as a community and provide um, needs, mm -hmm. you know, um, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Yeah, because we're called to the broken, you know, yeah. that's what the church is for. Um, and I think that goes right into God putting us in this space where we're, you know, stripped down to the studs to be able to mm -hmm. get back to him, mm -hmm. um, get back to the things that he desires um, and that how and allow him to mold us and shape us into who he desires us to be in this in this phase mm -hmm. yeah. of life. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been a great conversation. Um, I know it's been helpful for me. I hope it's been helpful to those tuning in. I do have one last fun question, hopefully, for you to answer, and it's like rapid. So what is something that you have done for fun in 2020 since we've not been able to do our normal fun things? I'm gonna say two things. Go for okay. it. I'm just gonna take liberties. Okay. All right, okay. The first one is bake because I love baking. And so it started off as a coping thing during the beginning of the quarantine, but now I just love it. I mean, like I've always loved it, but so it's been fun. I've enjoyed doing that. Um, that's been fun. And the second thing is 
Um, my son played baseball this summer. Um, he usually doesn't play like mm -hmm. majors, and but he mm -hmm. tried out and made it this summer. And that has really been fun for our family. I've really, like he's had practice every day and games and that has given our a family a sense of continuing on, I mm -hmm. think in a way, and, and some sort of semi-normalcy. Um, and it's been fun to watch him grow from the first game to like the last game and his confidence and his skill level and stuff. So that's, I don't know, I guess it's not my personal fun, but it's like a family fun thing. Mm -hmm. That is really fun. Um, I think what, I'm just gonna go with what keeps coming to mind. We purchased a house um, here, and so it's been really fun, you know, perusing Etsy and Pinterest, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, a little personal, intentional project that I have going of, I wanna, you know, get the, the pieces that I'm really gonna love, and, um, have maybe even a backstory to them and things like mm -hmm. that. Like, I, it was so funny because I um, actually saw like a TikTok, as you all know, that's been my jam. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, it was a doormat, like somebody's been creating doormats. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. And then if you could describe 2020 in one word, what would it be? One word. <laughs> Why she look at me when she says that? One, one word. One word. One word. I, I don't have so one word. I'm going to be disobedient. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Go ahead. I know. Okay. I would describe it in a face. Scraping the plate of okay. my season. Okay. Scraping the plate. Transformative. Transformative. All right. And if you have tuned in and you have a word for 2020, drop it in the comments. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>